the umpire's launch and the start pontoons revealing the crews sitting there for the Ireland Challenge Cup final. This is the Student Women's Eights event and we have Brown University from the USA. Yesterday they beat the record for this event by 17 seconds. Now in fairness this event only started last year, so they had one record to beat, but 17 seconds and last year was no slouches. The holders, Brooks, were pretty fast down the course, so this crew has formed. They beat the record to each of our key markers, the barrier, Fawley, and the finish line. So that's the crew to beat Brown University. And facing them, also from the USA, five of them from the Varsity 8, four from the second Varsity 8, it's Yale University. So excited to see this race, Zoe. I think this is going to be a great race. The last time these crews saw each other in a direct battle, there was two tenths of a second between them. So I think we are going to be in for some uh, special scenes here. We just had a photo finish in the stewards, the open men's coxless fours. Will the stewards need that line camera again for this race? Prediction there of a close race. Here comes umpire is on their feet, giving them instructions. They're all sat forward. The two Cox's hands are up, indicating they're not aligned yet. They're not ready to go. The hands have to go down. Get ready, please. And the ducks pass by. Uh, an aeroplane thunders overhead. A little bit of noise to unsettle the athletes, but the hands are down. Expect a very close race. So it's Brown at University on the left and Yale University on the right. The Americans have bought their fastest crews in the student women's eights to Henley to race off for this coveted Ireland Challenge Cup trophy. Clean start, powerful start. It looks like Yale are trying to do everything they can to rattle the Brown crew, Zoe. Absolutely. Yale, I guess you could say, are the underdogs. They haven't beat Brown yet this season. Uh, Yale are coming over here, not quite the same crew as they've had during their main US season. Two British women actually had to come out due to previous wins or ineligibility. But it looks like it is Brown with all but their all but one of their athletes from their 1v crew this year who've got out to an early start. But Yale moving really nicely there. Again, they look like they're getting quite a lot of time with their blades in the water compared to slightly shorter strokes from Brown. Although. That's a bit of a hallmark of the Brown crew. Feisty, distinctive in their style, higher on the rate. They often look short, but they still do really get movement of their blades under the water. Great insight, insights from Olympic Cox. Zoe de Toledo alongside me here. Absolutely, you can see the Brown crew. Shorter, punchier stroke. Lovely long stroke, dynamic stroke from the Yale crew, crew closest to the camera. We can see Aparajita Chauhan in the Cox's seat urging on Claire Dirks in the stroke seat there and you can see it's pretty neck and neck at this point uh, in the course. Brown versus Yell. it's an all-American final in the Ireland Challenge Cup as we look down the course and it looks like Brown with that punchier stroke have been able to ease out to maybe a third of a length over their Yell competitors. There's the yellow flag which indicates the first timing marker, the barrier at 637 metres down this course. It's really the first quarter of the course, and I'd say the first quarter of the race probably goes to Brown at this point. Has that punchy start been expensive for them? We'll see as the middle of the race starts to unfold now. It looks like they've just crept out a little bit there. I think what will be interesting to see is that these two programmes have very different styles in terms of how they run their year. Brown have this really racy program. I heard that there was a rumor that they do a 2K every single week on a Monday. Whereas Yale, they're much more about um, they are much more about their volume. They do longer sessions. So will a longer course here at Henley, a longer race than they're used to, will that work in Yale's favor? We'll see. 2K uh, test on the ergo, that's one of the most painful things one can do if you're not familiar with it. And that's the punishing program of Brown. That leads them to the punchy, aggressive, highly competitive style that we can see here on the right of the picture. Yell a bit longer. And in the middle of the course, you need to have something that's sustainable. And that's the question. What's the base pace that both these crews can sustain for the thousand plus mid middle of the course section here at Henley? Um, you can see it's getting warmer here and that makes it, you know, the water a little bit more fluid. I'm not sure whether we'll see any records tumble because we've still got a little bit of a headwind but the winds have really dropped it's almost perfect conditions and perfect pictures here wherever you're watching if you're watching us from the US good morning to you this is an all-american event now the American name will go on the 
beautiful new Ireland Challenge Cup trophy. Trophy. The question is, will it be Brown or will it be Yale? Yeah, Brown University look like they've maybe just got that clear water advantage now over the crew from Yale. I think Brown have used that feisty early start quite well. They also have some experience. They won at Henley Women's Regatta, the Champagne's event, uh, just a few short weeks ago. So they've got that experience of racing between the booms. Will they be able to hold it all the way from the finish line for Henley Women's at Remenham down right to us in Stewart's? Well, I can see the Yale crew really attacking as they must do now as they go through the three-quarter mile signal. You can see lane one, Brown University broke the record by 17 seconds yesterday, beating uh, Oxford Brooks A crew. They beat Nereus on Friday and Newcastle University on, four, uh, on Thursday pretty easily. But look at Yale, really explosive attacking here. They're desperate to get back on terms in this third quarter of the race. Yeah, and Yale have form doing this. Yesterday they raced you well, and actually, I think we all set, thought that Yale had that race pretty much in hand. But the Yale crew were just more effective in their rowing. They were efficient, they were neat, and that pulled them back through. And that's what's happening here again as well. It looks like that crew from Yale is starting to put themselves back on terms now with Brown University. Yeah, absolutely right. They were led by University of London A crew yesterday and came through around the three-quarter mile marker. Now, they've already passed the three-quarter mile marker, so they've left themselves with more to do later in the race. That's a big, big ask, particularly having had quite a tough race. Coming from behind generally suggests it's been a harder race for those athletes. So those legs, the question for the women in Yale, have they got what it takes in those legs? Does that weekly 2K ergo test, fearsome, fearsome training from the Brown crew, give them the speed they need? We're into the third quarter of the race and starting to approach the stewards enclosure and the crowd to be looking forward to this one looks to me like brown have actually managed to absorb that push now from yale yale are going to have a huge amount to do if they want to overturn at this point so if you're here on the riverbank or if you're home in the u.s and you are cheering on that yale crew get on your feet because they are going to need that now as they come into the last part of this race if they are going to overturn this crew from brown Brown versus Yale, USA versus USA. There's the back of Beata Kaz in the brown seat. She and in front of her, Eloise Baker, their job and bow and two is to set the boat up to make it a stable platform to keep the strokes quick and fast and sharp. And Brown really is a sharp crew, isn't it? Looking at the way that they're rowing. As you said, right from the start, they've been punchier, sharper, uh, and that kind of really has paid off through the middle of the course. That can often be expensive, but I think Yale, you can see a slightly longer, slightly lower stroke rate there from the Yale crew, and that's not been enough in the middle of the course to break Brown's lead. I think Brown were just willing to put themselves right in the fire from the word go. Yale, maybe a more efficient stroke, maybe a little bit neater, but it is Brown who are comfortably leading now. Clear water over Yale. As you can hear the cheers from the crowds coming through the stewards' enclosure. So we've gone through the mile in the 8th, 1800 metres, only 300 metres left to go now, less than that. The crowd are on their feet, applauding Brown. They take it up with confidence. Let's see what they've got. There's no point in leaving anything in the tank. There isn't a race tomorrow. Let's see the speed they can get. Can they crack through the last 10 strokes? Beautiful row from Brown, punchy from the start. Yale responding with length and strength, but it hasn't been enough. The young women from Brown University, USA, they put their name for the second time only in the history of Henley. The Ireland Challenge Cup has been won, and it's been won well from the start by Brown over Yale. What a race. Yeah, and you can see just how much it's taken out of that Brown crew. Barely enough uh, left in them to give a cheer, but I'm sure they have enjoyed watching that Yale crew behind them. Hayley, unbeaten since you've been over in the UK winning women's Henley and now Henley Royal Regatta. Just how good is the team around you and the, the, the morale on board the boat? It's been really great. I think like from day one our team was just about putting our heads down and doing the work and when we came off our team, like our season at home, um, we knew it wasn't over. So I really just credit everything here to the training we did um, from the day kind of our regular season ended at home. How long has Henley been a plan for you? Why come to this regatta? Um, I mean, this is really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, in the NCAA, we can only come here as a team once every four years, and our coaches said that this was something we could do if we prove our, proved our speed in the regular season. Um, so halfway through our regular season, our coaches decided that our results showed that you know, we could come here and do something, and that's when they kind of said the go, and we started fundraising to be here.
You seem very chilled, but personally, what does it mean to be on this such a historic regatta, the Roll of Honor here? Oh, it's just so amazing. I feel like every time I'm on the course, I just, I, I really just can't believe that I'm here. Um, and this is my last year rowing, so, I mean, I just feel so honored that I, I had the opportunity to end it at a Henley final.